Welcome back, everybody, going into part two of today's episode of Roleplay. Far Verona, uh, Booker has taken a temporary leave of absence, so let's let's check in with the chaplain. Uh, so you you're in you're you're back in in fighting form. You're dressed in a slightly more trill version of your own clothes, uh, and you have been uh, you've been invited, I think, to uh, to meet with the other side of this equation, uh, your your fellows uh, in the church. Um, mm. I think at some point a church functionary uh, comes to you and tells you that uh, the inquisitor, uh, the inquisitor uh, Akinyemi, would like to speak with you uh, in uh, in his office. I just nod my head. Please lead the yeah. way. Okay. So they uh, this this person yeah they they lead you through uh, through what is now clear to you the Temple of Justice uh, one of the uh, one of the wings of uh, of the Great Berkman Cathedral um, you're never taken past a um, like a, a window so you don't see the the vast drop uh, down to the planet but the whole thing is just incredibly opulent. Um, this section of the temple is uh, a series of interconnected hallways that attach to uh, courtrooms. Um, there are private halls. There are more expensive um, areas for public trial. Um, and uh, you are led towards a, a section of living quarters and accompanying offices. Uh, on some of the doors, you see the marks of the various houses uh, of the empire, that these are... Um, offices of, of visiting dignitaries um but you were led to one uh just a, a plain uh, a plain door as far as doors go in trill the trill universe so it's probably i don't know made out of solid diamonds but you're led to a door with no no name on it and the um and the the attendant um walks up and opens the door and gestures with a a, a sleeved arm for you two to go inside Bow my head, head my head, make my way inside. Okay, keeping right. an eye out. Yeah, so you you come inside, and uh, the office looks like it belongs to someone with a uh, a, a predilection towards uh, reading. There are a bunch of uh, both. Um, traditional like paper uh, books of varying ages, um, and then also there is a, a a terminal on which a news feed is is slowly scrolling. Um, there are a bunch of screens that are currently off, but all read with the various uh, Prism logos uh, for their their different services. And um, standing, he's he's standing up as you've walked in. Uh, is a uh, a man. He's quite tall. He's like you know six and a half feet. Um, He's got uh, dark skin. He's wearing uh, kind of like you, something that's like vaguely church. It gives off a church vibe, but there's no clear like he doesn't have the he doesn't have the collar. He's not wearing like a, 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 a big uniform. But yeah, maybe he's got a little like church pin on his on his lapel or something. Mm -hmm. But yeah, something you've seen this outfit before, and it's yeah. like people who want to be non-threatening but also churchy, right? This is not ritual yeah. garb. Um, yeah. So he's even and, um, more in, in discreet than I am because I've still got the yeah, collar and stuff. So exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like a church, like a, he's dressed as a church diplomat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, like dark, dark skin. Um, he has a uh, has a either a cybernetic eye or or heterochromia because one eye is like a very dark brown and the other is like a light kind of ice blue. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and he just has short uh, short hair. Um, and he's wearing above and beyond all of his, his clothes and his, his outfit and all of that. The thing you notice most is a look of deep pained guilt on his face. <laughs> like he, that is the thing he is wearing louder and more brightly than anything else. Uh, and so he, um, he looks at you and you've seen this look, people who want absolution for something they feel they've done wrong. And he, that's the first thing you get when you, when you walk in the room is this look of like, He's he's deeply sorry, uh, mm. and I think he says he says to you as you're walking into the room. He's walking towards you, and he, he says, um, "I can't express to you how deeply upset I was when I heard what happened, and on my own personal channel, I'm so so sorry, Chaplain." And he, he comes over to you. I'll just bow my head. Uh, Inquisitor Akanyemi, I, I presume, and I will hold out the 
I'll hold out my like my normal hand, like my left hand. <laughs> yeah, which which arm? Shape. And we we have to establish it now so the chat can notice every time we fuck it up. Which arm is your golden arm? Right arm, gold arm. Okay, that's golden, my right, golden right arm. Left, is it yeah, your strong right arm, arm or is the other one more strong? I would imagine that's your strong arm now. The, the right arm is was his predominant hand, but yeah, but okay. uh, yeah, you know, he was he's pretty ambidextrous, the old chaplain. Okay, okay, so, all right. Yeah, so the left uh, hand comes out. Okay, keeping the the new golden one hanging quite loosely by the side, still not quite used to it. Okay, yeah, he, he clutches your hand in both hands warm dry hands he's like holds them and he doesn't it, he shakes but he doesn't let go and he like just hold on to me he looks at you and he says um we knew that this planet was dangerous but i i had never thought they would attack one of our own i'm glad that you seem well he, he looks at you we made I sure am. that and he lets go and, and he, he looks he's looking at the arm he says these sorts of things usually we, we would prefer to uh, have your permission, but your file said that you had given up certain, uh, that you would, um, you were a special operative of the church and that we could make these sorts of decisions for you in an emergency. This wasn't the first time that you've been. It is fine. Uh, it is not a style I would have chosen for myself, but I am grateful to the church and to God for giving me a tool to complete my work. Um, but we must, uh, I must apologize. I must go straight to business. How yes. did this happen, Inquisitor? I received your communication and then. Yeah, we he, knew he gives you a face. Trouble. He gives you a face like which part? <laughs> like, how did this happen? <laughs> mm, I look and say, like, how did they use your communication how did they become aware that i was on the way to see you have you research have you investigated this have you looked into how they knew of my location yes we've of course been looking into it there's evidence that my personal communications channel had been compromised mm. and uh, whoever it was that compromised it they used that information to lure you into a trap. Mm. Uh, I assure you, uh, he puts his hand to his chest like earnestly, I assure you I, I had no idea any of this was going to happen, nor that they were using my channel. I, I had been communicating normally for days before. And he has this, uh, the look on his face, he's got a very expressive face, and, and the look on his face becomes one of like, you can see him going over like, everything that he said in, in the last few days and like, what do they know about me? It and like, you can see him. Yeah. 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 Do so. I, I know I'm going to make it. I want to make a check to make sure that I've got a good read on this guy. You know, he, mm. he's coming across mm -hmm. very earnest, but right now I'm in full suspicion mode. So yeah. can I make a check? Please. Yeah. Yeah. Do, uh, Was that notice, do, uh wisdom? notice and wisdom. Yep. Okay, he's yeah, uh, yeah. He, I mean, he's not actively hiding something, but he's got some personal skin in the game, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Like something about okay. this is a risk to him. Okay. Uh, I will turn to him and say, "Well, of course, that is obviously not only a grave threat to anyone that you have communicated with, but to yourself as well, Inquisitor. Uh, perhaps it would be best. I have some experience with these things, and I have a particular skilled uh, man on my team." Uh, who is also good at these matters. Would you be so kind as to give me a list of who you spoke to over the last few days? He does not want to do that. <laughs> like, the look in his face is like, uh, how do I say no to this without saying no to this in a way that's going to upset you? He um, he twitches slightly, and, and he says, um, you, you must understand, Chaplain, that... As an Inquisitor, I have business of my own that is very sensitive. Ongoing investigations, crucial to the survival of the High Church. I, um, I, I don't know that I can very easily give up that information to you. You mean the information that could have been compromised by this lack of... Uh... Yes, 
Yeah, it pain it pains me to think of who might have access to my files, but would it not uh, be prudent of you to have an ally in making sure that those who have potentially acquired this information do not use it against you? I appreciate a, your concern. Uh, yeah. Make a talk roll. Let's see if you can let's see if you can For push charisma? It. So make a talk yeah, talk and charisma. Ha! Okay, so he uh, he says, um, I, I, I will see if I can get approval. I'm in the middle of some delicate things, and one does not mend a tear by making it wider. But if I you understand. think that you could help... You... I think that I am personally and professionally concerned with the fact that if your communication has been... I'm trying to think of the word. Mark Humes is trying to think Com of the word. Compromised, Intercepted. maybe? Compromised. Intercepted. Okay. Then it must be someone that you have had dealings with, somebody... This would require some technical skill, I am sure, and that means that it must be somebody that you have spoken with or uh, been with recently. And again, it is to make sure that we follow up on all these leads. And he, he gestures. Uh, to the to the seat across from his desk, and he says, "Please, Chapman, sit down." And he he mm -hmm. walks over and he sits down at his his desk, and he he says, "Um, I can tell you this much: like you mm -hmm. and your friends in the House of Crux, I have been investigating the insurgents on this planet, not mm -hmm. from a political angle. I'm not interested in finding out who is a traitor to the throne, but from mm -hmm. a spiritual angle." There is a deeply unsettling thread on this planet of connection between the religious factions and external forces arrayed against the Empire and, as a result, against the Church. I have been investigating I saw, these connections. I saw some worrying things when we went to go speak with one Talat Lao. Is he one of yes. the people that you are keeping an eye on? And what, Inquisitor... <sighs> Is your opinion of the Reverend Elder Miguela? The Reverend Elder believes that the only way to serve the flock is by being a part of it. We understand that there is a degree of responsibility in being above those we serve, in attending to the higher matters. The Reverend Elder disagrees with some of the church's behavior here on Berkman, but we believe mm. that she acts in our best interest. Hmm. And this Talat Lao, he is a person of interest to you. Lao is something of a firebrand. I am he, very aware. He has connections to the mayor. The Reverend Elder is a friend of this pastor. She thinks that he can be turned. Convinced. I'm not sure he's not being influenced. You, you disagree, Chaplain. I just look down at the golden arm. Mm -hmm. There is a part of me which believes that perhaps the point for turning individuals that would attack people is long past. Not just because they have attacked me or a priest but the fact that these attacks could have injured who knows how many people collateral damage and that is something I find personally quite distasteful that is not what this church stands for it has been a matter of some debate on how long to leave Lao to operate the way they are your arrival has accelerated these things Crux ship in orbit, Crux troops on the planet could be what it takes to push for having Lao removed. The only trouble is that if it happens before Lao leads us to whoever it is in this PIB that they run, then we could lose them. Yes, I agree. I've been in, con I've been in contact with the intelligence division on your ship. Mm -hmm. You brought in Alexander Karsten. Karsten led yes. you here, but there's someone in between that we're missing. Indeed. We can't be rid of Lao until then. Then you and I are in agreement, Inquisitor. And 
I am glad to hear that there is someone enforcing God's will and looking out for the interests of the Empire here in the High Church. My concerns of Miguela have escalated. I think it's perhaps best if I speak with my team, let them know that I am alive. However, if possible, I do not know. Have you released uh, any information about me or the accident yet? Prism Local has been reporting that you were killed. The death of a chaplain, especially a visiting chaplain, is a matter of some significance on a planet like this. People care deeply about their priests. Some mm. would be happy to see you dead. Others are mourning you already. No official statement has been made. We anticipated that your team would come calling once they found out. But they've been occupied with their own mission as well. I and thought to ask you about this. Do you... Want to live, Chaplain? <laughs> he kind of laughs at the absurdity of the statement, but... Yeah, I think Valencia grows quite dark, um, you know, and kind of almost silent, like maybe like cuts off the laugh with a bit of a look. Uh, and he just kind of looks at the Inquisitor and says, no, Chaplain Valencia died in that explosion. Chaplain Valencia was a life I built for myself after the war that man is not needed here anymore and then i'll just very seriously stand up and this time offer the golden hand as a handshake yeah can you, you inquisitor can you make a, yeah. a lead and charisma roll oh shit okay i'm not very good at these but sure oh, seven. okay all right um, until, until you do something to like convince this dude, otherwise you have just like, he's like, okay, cool. You're in charge now. Good. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. This, cool. cause he, you know, he, he's read your file and stuff, but now being face to face with you and you just being like, death doesn't matter to me. I could just make up a new person to be like the chaplain <laughs> is all that matters. So he, yeah. So he, he just nods and he stands up and he, he shakes your hand. Uh, and he, he says, uh, of course, of course, chaplain. Whatever we can do. Receiving your confirmation that the information on who you have been speaking to uh, arrives. And uh, I look forward to working with you, Inquisitor. We will make Berkman a place for the true faith once again. Yeah, and he, he just kind of nods after you as you leave, like he's clearly impressed and maybe a little more than a little intimidated. Yeah, um, and then I'm going to... Start making my way to uh, meet the team. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you can you can you can come and go as you please. Basically, like uh, the what will happen is um, uh, Akinyemi Inquisitor Akinyemi will be like, okay, this is the situation. Uh, yeah. The the chaplain the chaplain is operating under the radar. They'll release an official statement about your expiry, uh, mm -hmm. but you can in secret contact your your team. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, someone will, if they, if you want, someone will shuttle you down back down to the, the surface. You're not really in space, but like they'll, they'll head you back down to, uh, to the planet. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe have down. like, I'd probably ask for them to find out where the team is, but not necessarily confirm it's me or like not mention me at all. Just be like, oh, we're hmm, looking okay. for the crop ship that was working with Valencia. Whereabouts are you? We want to send somebody to speak with you. <clears throat> that kind of Perfect. thing. Okay. All right. So let's cut to yeah. Let's cut okay. to Nomi Booker and uh, and Kiran, and you're in the you're in the spaceport. It's long enough later that the all, like the place smells of of like high burnt high concentrate fuel. Um, there is uh, there is a bit of like smokiness in the air still. This is an um, an open to the open to the outside uh, uh, port, right? Because people come and go quickly, and it's still shut down. Technically, there are like interim planetary because the, the plant doesn't have like an official imperial government but it's like a protectorate of of the church um so there is a like protectorate uh officers uh kind of hanging out um keeping the peace and making sure people don't you know i'm sorry you can't access your vehicle right now there's been an emergency you know please wait yada yada like doing that stuff traffic cop stuff uh and you are walking up to to this this kind of open facility there's still some emergency uh crews around um 
but yeah, you can imagine these the the sort of planetary cops. They have these like beige, these like beige outfits and these little like caps. And some of them have have sidearms, but not all of them. Um, and they're just like members of the of the community. Uh, so as you uh, as you approach, I think uh, one of them you see Nomi. You see one of them notice you. It's a big group of you. They see the crux purple and they're like, "Oh shit, the FBI is here!" And they run off to get to get like their captain <laughs> or whatever. So when you approach. Uh, the, uh, the captain is, uh, the captain is approaching, uh, you to kind of meet you and, um, Nomi, can you make a, um, make a notice, notice and wisdom roll. I just want to see if you get the, the a general effect of this person. 10. Oh, damn. Okay. So you've seen this attitude before planetary cop. He's about to come up to you and tell you not to juris his diction, right? He's about to be like. Oh yeah, we've got everything under control. We don't. There's no need for you and your soldiers. You can go on back to the embassy, and you can see him. He's already about to be like, "Here comes." So uh, you you have the initiative, the social initiative here to cut him off. Social initiative. Yeah. Oh lord. I don't know what to say to him. Um. You you got cool. you got Booker. There is it. Do don't. You... I was gonna say, don't say anything. Just have our foot soldiers just go and put us, put their hands on him, and we just walk straight past him. <laughs> Look, your nose is tight, yeah. but he's respecting chain of command. Um. Yeah, I mean, your 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 a... your opportunity here is just to you can look at Booker and be like, deal with this asshole. Right. Do I have I have like jurisdiction in this? Right. I'm like the FBI on and like coming at the state cops. I was say, honey, you work right. for House Crux. You have jurisdiction everywhere in the universe. Right. This guy. Well, I didn't want to do something himself. and then have someone be like, "She can't do that. He's a cop," or like whatever in the chat. So um, <laughs> that's exactly what they sound like. We're the cops. That's exactly what they sound like when they say that. <laughs> yeah. We're the so no, cops. like House House Crux has you are you are the fucking wandering samurai of the empire. You can go anywhere and tell anybody to do anything you want as long as you are pursuing. Right the the correct disposition of the law so yes right okay um i i actually look at arnahan um and mm -hmm. kind of give her like a knowing like head nod at the dude that's walking toward us damn it right so you want her to go deal with him i need you investigating things yeah i want her yeah. to like okay. intersect right. she 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 nods uh and she walks over and she she takes your your initiative so the guy's like he takes a deep breath and he's about to say something and arnahan is like right now this is how it's gonna go come with me and she like puts her arm around the guy and just takes him away somewhere and he, he's like but wait i and he, she's like no all right here's the paperwork you need to file and she's she just like just drags him off and he gets completely deflected um, the rest of the, the officers, there's maybe like a dozen of them and they're kind of just standing around and up until now they felt like they were important and you've shown up and just completely deflated them. Now they're just looking at you like, oh, this is really serious. Like the crux have showed up. Maybe what's going And they're like whispering to each other and kind of like, you know, they're being very fucking unprofessional. Um, your, uh, your team aside from Arnahan, they know what they're, what they need to do. They set up a, they set up a perimeter, uh, and they, they keep both the cops and looky lose away from whatever it is you need to do. So now, uh, Kiran, Booker, and Nomi, you have free reign of the of the spaceport. Okay. Um, sure. Wait, we just begin investigating, I guess. Uh, I'll look yeah. at uh, Greaves as we walk up, and I say, um, Officer Greaves, I'm putting you in charge of the investigation. I'm here to assist, and I will let you know if I find anything. Sounds good. I'm going to try to talk to those on site here to figure out what they've gathered thus far. Hopefully, they'll actually be cooperative. I have some knowledge of mechanics and engineering. I'll go inspect the location of the blast and maybe try to pinpoint what caused it. Sounds good. Um, Booker is going to talk to who? Sorry. Uh, Lily is just going to talk to those that have been here. Like if he sees people that like are already investigating and stuff, yeah, and just just to be up to speed, so he doesn't, you know, he knows what they've already ascertained, kind mm -hmm. of thing. Okay. Cool. Yep. So um, that's that's what he does. Like whoever that okay. is, madam, it's yeah, random, yeah, yeah, sure, guys. Okay. So I mean, we can we can kind of montage the the investigatory shit. So um, know me. Let's. 
Let's start with you. So, Nomi, what are you, what are you, what are you doing while while your team is uh, is is doing their investigation? Um, you could also instead of taking your own action, you could choose to like help Booker or uh, the Amira. Yeah, I think I if he's gonna talk to people, I think I would help Booker, uh, like convince people to give him information. That kind of thing. Okay. Sure. Okay, so Booker, who are you? Who do you start your your talk? You're talking to. Well, that's old Flanagan that I'm talking to, Shaughnessy <laughs> old Flanagan. I'm just kidding. Um, whoever I mean, if you, is so like, here's here's the thing, right? So this is where the, again this the connect rule comes in. Um, you can just make someone up if you need someone with information. You can you can use connect mm-hmm. to say I find somebody who like as a player. Connect is really like a player thing. Rather than like yeah. Booker doing anything, mm-hmm. so what? What do you need? Who do you who do you need to be able to to talk to you? Um, somebody that's like a forensics like kind of specialist. Eye- yeah, oh, like so you want eye- a cop who has already collected some information? Yeah, a cop that's already collected some information. That would be his his okay. kind of way of going about it. One, find out the information that's already been figured out by everybody that is currently doing the the investigation before they arrived, and then move on to like witnesses to corroborate what the, they're saying. Okay. All right. So let's have you roll a roll a connect roll. You want a competent local police force member. God. Um, this that shouldn't be too hard. Bad. Let's say seven seven or better on a connect and charisma roll. Well, just because you said that, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You so you find. I'm, I'm not surprised. Because <laughs> <laughs> you called it. It's like it's a perfect call shot. So you uh you you will get a cop, but they will not necessarily be competent or cooperative. They'll be difficult. Um, right. so yeah, you, you go over and you can see, you can see that somebody has got a, um, uh, there, there's like a detective or whatever, a local, a local detective and they're, they're, you know, they're, they're getting their team and they're loading a vehicle. Um, so you want to, you want to head over and, and talk to them. They're loading a vehicle with some like forensic equipment. Excuse me. The, uh, the officer, uh, looks up with a look that is equal parts tired because it's late and frustrated and like i was about to go home and now you're gonna make me stay here and talk to you listen i understand and they look up you want to get the fuck out of here so do i i want to know what's actually going on i'm not going to make this long and i'm going to make it as painless as you want to make it uh and they they, they kind of like blink hard a couple of times and and yeah and he he says um like i, I don't I don't know what House Crux needs. I mean, we we filed the report. You have access to everything in the database. It was just an accident. Look, these things happen sometimes. Yeah, you believe that that this was just an accident. All the evidence indicates there was a problem in the ignition, in the shuttle. And then, I mean, it's a tragedy. Don't get me wrong. People died, but there's no need to make it into something that it isn't. Let me ask you something. How often is there a problem in the ignition with these shuttles? You know well, the it, was the tri- it was a trillion shuttle. These things, they're all flashy and, and expensive, but they don't build them. You know, the, it's not a Fornax shuttle. It doesn't have spirit. I rolled it. Um, I don't know to, to know. That's horseshit. Statistics. That's total horseshit. Like Trillion doesn't exactly. make stuff that looks nice but doesn't work. Like their shit is yep. perfect. Yes, it's expensive and flashy, but like there's no way it would just like randomly blow up. Like that's mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. So he Booker, one in a billion. Like, yeah. Booker spouts off like you realize that it's when you said trillion and these things happen mechanically, those make zero sense. One in like a billion. Would have a malfunction like this. He, so you're just going to take this at face value and just, pff, listen, I get you don't want to have to do the work, but part of actually doing your job means doing your fucking job. And he, he kind of scowls at you and he, uh, he says, uh, I, I don't know what you want. You can look around if you want to. Is this all the information? Is the complete report? And he turns and he, he's like, he says to one of his, his side, one of the other officers, he's like, give me the, and they, they give him the data pad and he, he hands it to you and he says, that's everything the forensics team captured here. We did some 
investigating, talked to some people around, but eyewitness reports say there was two people in the shuttle. Priest and the pilot. You Everybody guys are the first on scene uh, here? You know, it's, I mean, I, I, I was, and I got called in from the office, but gestures, but my team were the first on the scene. I'm going to need to know who was the first individual on scene. And uh, a list of the he, entire team with you. And he, he, he says, uh, sure, sure, yeah. Um, it's, it's on the, the roster's on the data pad there. And he, um, he points, and, uh, and you can see there's, a, there's an officer. She's um, they're all wearing exactly the same outfit. She's sitting, uh, she's sitting on uh, a crate, and she's talking to, uh, there's a, a man who, um, he looks like he's got a like, bandage wrapped around his head, and um, there's a first aid kit next to her, and she's got um, like soot and like blood on her, on her uniform and on her face. Um, and she's sitting and talking to this, this kind of like old man. Um, and he points, uh, and he says, uh, first on the scene, it's officer Hepburn there. She works the dock. All right. I'll continue my conversation with her. Thanks for being so cooperative. And he, he nods and he says, uh, so I, I can, I can go, right? You don't need me for you can go. And he turns back around. And he's like, you heard him. And like kind of tries to take command of his guys. Like, yep, this is my order. Not that guy. Fuck that guy. We're getting out of here, boys. <laughs> and they, they go back to like finishing their, their loadout. As so um, while Booker is, uh, oh, yeah, sorry, while Booker is talking that, um, Kieran, where do you, where do you go? What do you want to do? I'm going to head straight for the, um, I guess like for the, for the engine compartment. See, try to track down like what misfired, how it misfired. And then maybe see, I don't, we didn't bring scanners, although I would say, otherwise I would say maybe br see if there's chemicals present that are not like common in, in rocket fuel or jet fuel or whatever is used in this. I have mm, some knowledge okay. of, of mechanics and engineering, so hopefully that yeah, will help. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're looking at, you're looking at the information about the, because again, like everybody has, you, you can just pull up your data pen and it gives you all the like scanner data. It's just raw data now. Nobody has uh, analyzed it yet, but you're okay. smart. You can take a look at it and see if you can find patterns. Yeah, make yeah. a, um, like make a, it's pilot because it's like all the stuff to do with sh ships. So make a pilot mm -hmm. check with intelligence. It's like actually a really good role for you. You can do it. Shouldn't have said it was a good roll for you. You only rolled okay. It normally Sorry, is. I have two on pilot. Yeah. Um, nothing about the chemical like makeup of the explosion indicates to you that uh, like nothing is here that shouldn't be. You're just like fuel, fuel. That's fuel. Accelerant, fuel. Like these are it, all the all the components. Like the there's no there's no like fuel, fuel bomb, fuel. Like it's it's pretty normal yeah. stuff. Okay. Um, but it it definitely shouldn't just explode. Like it's in it's supposed to be inert and like, yeah, something. It's clear to you that there's foul play here, but um, it, it wasn't like attacked by a rocket launcher or anything. Mm hmm. And what about like the inner workings of the engine? Like, what kind of state is it in? Is it like, um, the vehicle under itself under is? Way? Yeah, it's it's like it's under a thick layer of uh, fire retardant foam. Um, mm. and it's just, it's blown up. It's like, it's like putting a, a firecracker in a tin can. Like it's just, there's shattered glass and twisted burnt metal. Um, the deck plating is all scorched. Um, you think you can see part of like the fuel container with its sides all like blown out, but yeah, it was a, mm -hmm. it was a big explosion. That's why more than, more than just the people on the shuttle were killed. Like there's, there's been several casualties from people standing mm. around that got shrapnel thrown at them. And... Can I see the origin point of the blast looking at the way that the metal is bent and uh yes, yeah, it happened in yeah, it came from the explosion was coming from inside the shuttle. The shuttle blew up from from within. And it, it looks like internal to the mechanisms of the shuttle, right? It looks like the the engine itself blew up. Um it wasn't like something that blew up in the cargo hold or or anything like mm -hmm. that. And this is going to be a long shot, but looking closer, do I see any evidence of like things being where they shouldn't be or tampering in general or like, Not on a nine. Uh, okay. All right. 
Yeah. The equipment that these officers have can't collect that. Like, you need to recreate the crime scene, and you need some fairly specialized equipment. Um, they have that yeah. equipment on the Prudence, but not down here. You, you didn't come down here to, to do forensics work. But you could have it delivered from the Prudence. Um, but by then, who knows? Okay. Um, so, no me. Uh, Booker has this, this short conversation with the semi-useful police officer who points over mm -hmm. to the the first arriver. Uh, do you want to go with him over and talk to Officer Hepburn, or do you have something else you want to look into? Um, sure. Yes, I will go talk to that officer. Okay. All right. Um, so Booker. as he's walking over, Booker like leans over to to know me and is like, "If there is some sort of plot, and this is, as I believe it is, not an accident, it would make sense that the people that first responded would potentially be controlled by those in charge of this." So I'm going to go ahead and put a flag out on everyone that was a part of that unit, that first responding unit, to monitor their movements and see where they go. Drones and such. Understood. Smart thinking. You might want to probe this, this, this one coming up here a little bit more to see. I'll be doing the same. Uh, just kind of give him a nod and then look at the person that's walking. I guess I'm walking toward them. Yeah. So there's two they? of them. There's a, uh, yeah, there's a woman in the police outfit, police uniform. Uh, she's got uh, kind of like dirty blonde hair. It's mostly pulled back in a ponytail, but there's some pieces that have gotten like fallen loose that she's tried to push out of her face and gotten like blood and soot on her face. Her uniform's mm -hmm. dirty uh, on the front. Um, and uh, she's got a first aid kit sitting next to her uh, with the, the serpents like symbol of the snakes climbing the, the staff. Um, and uh, and there's the, this, this man, this kind of like uh, late middle aged, like older man uh, who she's talking to uh, as you as you walk up. And uh, yeah, and as you approach, uh, she stands up and uh, she, she gives the two of you a salute. And, uh, and she says, um, uh, officers? Hepburn? Um, is it? <clears throat> Th that's right, sir. Booker's just kind of, you can make me roll or not. Um, just in general, like, how's, how's she responding? Is she, like, super shook? Or? Um, yeah, if you want to just get a read on her, you can make the, uh, make the roll. That's, uh, yeah, notice wisdom. Um, no, she seems like she's, she's keeping it together. Yeah, but like keeping it together because she shook, but she's actually just. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't you don't get any. There's no reason to believe that that like. Yeah, gotcha. She's doing anything, anything untoward. Unless Nomi was following up with what she was going to say. And... Um, I'm kind of standing like a step behind you, and I'm gonna like uh, I might try and read her thoughts if she gives me any indication that she might be hiding something. But I'm just kind of like over like listening, but letting you do the thing. Mm -hmm. And who's the person that she's standing by? Like, is this just a civilian? Dude looks like a dock worker. Like he's got uh, he's got a uh, like a brown jumpsuit on with a tool belt. Um, right. He's got a bunch of blood down the front of it. It looks like he got hit in the head because he's got this like blood soaked like bandage. Um, mm. And he's just sitting. He's just sitting on the crate, like mumbling to himself. He's probably got a concussion. Yeah. Um. Then he follows up after she confirms Hepburn. Like, I understand. You were first on scene here? That that's right, sir. This is and she she gestures. Uh, this is my um my beat. Um who's an individual in here? Just kind of motions. Uh so she she looks uh and she says, Oh, I'm just a civilian, sir. Uh injured in the blast. He's a little disoriented, so um I, I was just gonna stay with him until a family member can come and pick him up. Is he coherent enough to... Excuse me, sir. Did you see uh, what happened? Best to your recollection, I understand. Probably a little hazy, a little bit shaken up. He says something to you in a language that is not imperial standard. Um, he kind of mumbles it. And and she uh, she shakes her head and, and she says, um, ah, that's, that's going to be tricky, sir. Uh, I don't think he speaks standard. Okay, I'm assuming you've interviewed him 
What, uh, did they see anything? Were they the witness here? And do you know of any others in the area that saw what happened? There, there were, there were a couple. I was, um, and she, she points at a, uh, like a building nearby or like an off building. She says, um, I, I was in there talking with customs. We heard the explosion. I came out uh, just horrible. Um, uh, we have a couple of, ca it's all in the report, a couple of casualties. Um, some, some folks, uh, taking a hospital facility. Um, but, uh, yeah, a real mess. You think, and she, she looks around suspiciously, you think it wasn't, um, it wasn't a, a, an accident? Um, yeah, Hepburn, come with me for a second. If you want to tell him, just uh, hold tight here for a moment. Uh, she, 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 she shrugs and she's like, I don't understand a goddamn thing he's saying, sir. No, me, do you? <laughs> uh, I step forward when he looks at me and I say, perhaps you can continue co your conversation with Officer Hepburn while I speak with this civilian. Sounds good. If you'd come with me. Okay. She falls off, yeah, like just a little bit off to the side so that way, because he doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> anyone in this in this vicinity right now um mm -hmm. so yeah when they're a little bit off the ways so from what you did you see the actual incident that happened from the explosion take me back well um so i uh, my, most of my job involves walking the lanes um you know making sure that uh if there's a dispute sometimes you know, a, a ship will be off um, schedule and someone else wants to land and they'll get in an argument or, um, you know, the, the dock workers, they, um, they, they get mistreated uh, and uh, there, there can be a... Honestly, officer, it's, it's not usually this exciting a job, um, but I, I was in there with customs. I just finished a walk at aisle six and um, we were... Um... You ever... <laughs> You ever seen that that show with the the talking corn? I, it's basically just an acre commercial, but but the the boys in the customs office they love it. And and we were talking about yesterday's episode, and and we were having a coffee, and I I, I was just about to head back out when we heard the sound. Awful thing. And the windows broke, and then uh, I came running out to see see what had happened, and then there was the fire and. Well, the automated system started putting the fire out right away, but um, you know, you know I, I knew there were going to be casualties. Uh, she, she gestures at the old, the old man, and, and she says, uh, people were knocked down. Uh, uh, folks like him got out of it easy. I haven't checked in with the hospital, but I think we lost a, a half dozen or so. And now, now, I don't know, maybe that doesn't sound like a lot to you, but Berkman's a little place, and you know, the, these people have family here. So... Yeah, a real, real tragedy. I understand. Any loss of life that's unneeded is horrible. I just want to figure out what the hell happened. So, you were well, the not a part of the team that team, arrived. She, she nods and she says, well, the scan team showed up pretty quick after. Uh, and um, th there were some Trillian folks uh, around. Um, they, they, were, they were talking to the captain. Um, and uh, I, I was mainly just tending to the, the, the folks that were hurt. And she, she keeps looking back at this old man. Um, but, but I guess there were two people on board. Uh, that, that's what they're saying. Uh, there, was, there was a pilot and uh, some sort of a priest. I guess he was heading up to the, the big chapel. So shame that. Well, spilled milk, right? We, we got to make sure the, the living get tended to. With this team. Did you, how quickly did they arrive? Oh, and you can, you can see she's, she's embarrassed by the answer that she has to give you. Like she, she's kind of like, ah, oh, God, like, how do I answer this? Doesn't make us all look bad. And like, you're a big fancy space cop and I'm all intimidated. Uh, and, and she kind of like looks down. Just, he like, he notices cause detective, like I'm just inter interested in the truth. I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble here. Least of all you, I just want the facts. Well, Oh, you know, these things take time. A lot of the officers, they're... Well, we don't get a lot of good training. 
down here and, and things don't always run smooth. So I don't know. It was a good hour or so before the scan team showed up. I mean, we had, we had local mm. s security and that, that trillion team, uh, they, they were here right quick, but you know, we do what we can. Anyone in particular seem off that we're here investigating things? Anybody that looked Not particularly that I... interested in the crash site and, you know, moving things around or anything like that? Well, I mean, the, the captain and those, those trillion people, they, they, they had a talk and, and I, I think I saw the troll folks loading something up into a, a vehicle. Um, but I, I don't know. They, they said something about proprietary technology and they're real aggressive about their IP. Mm. It's a funny thing. Yeah. How can property be an, an, an idea? I, I don't listen. I don't get it, but they, they took something, something special away from the busted up shuttle and, and they left with it. I understand. All right. You've been a good help. Thank you for uh, your time. Go ahead and take care of that uh, old man there. Yeah. So, uh, Nomi, did you want to talk to this guy? Because you can understand him. You you, you have a, a broad yeah. selection of languages from which to choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So while okay. he's talking with the officer. Yeah. So the language the language this dude is speaking is uh, Cabanese, I guess. It's from uh, from the planet Cabina. Uh, which is a kind of a, it's like a two hex neighbor to, uh, to this one. Um, lots of humans there. And, uh, yeah, he's speaking, he, he apparently can't speak standard and he's speaking Cabanese. And okay. when, when Booker was asking what, what Booker, what this guy, this old guy said to Booker was, who are you? Oh, okay. Um, but now you're like left alone with him, uh, as Booker and, and the officer walk off and he, he's just kind of like muttering to himself, like. Yeah. Um, so I kind of step forward, and in his language, I introduce myself. Um, my name is Nomi Ka. What is yours? He looks up at you and he squints, and uh, he seems surprised. And he uh, he says to you, and "We see you from his perspective, and so you you're sort of backlit by one of the big security lights that's shining down, and he's kind of not." Very, his, his eye is not great. So he like, squints up at you. He's got a concussion and he shakes his head and he says, um, Ah, I see. So I've died and you've come to take me to heaven. Is that it? And he stands up and he, uh, he says, uh, Ah, I knew my children wouldn't be here for this. Always late for everything. Well, let's go. He like looks around. Uh, I put my hand on his shoulder and I kind of gently like not like push him but kind of like encourage him to sit back down it's like, set and, the fuck back down okay yeah so he, um, like, he, he flops back down and he's like oh well, we're not going yet <sighs> <sighs> well so what is it then um I kind of like motion toward the crash site and then I say can you tell me what you remember? What happened here? Mm, yes. <laughs> yes, a shuttle exploded. How close were you to the shuttle when it exploded? Close enough. Gestures his head. <laughs> um, what were you doing in the spaceport? Hmm. <laughs> I'm a porter. You know what that is? They have those where you're from. I take luggage owned by rich people. I carry it from one place to another. I was putting luggage on the shuttle. I thought we were done. I gave the pilot the go ahead. And then... Do you know uh, whose luggage you were putting on the shuttle? Ah, uh, some priest. Do you know the priest's name? No. Did you see Handsome anything no. after the? Ex I saw him. He he <laughs> he 
He reminded me of me when I was younger. Handsome, mysterious, a little bit dangerous. You know the type. Uh, yeah, Nomi, like, looks like she wants to, like, smile at him, being like, I'm, I used to be handsome. Um, but she realizes that he's basically just describing the chaplain. Um, mm -hmm. and so she looks kind of somber and, uh, she says, did you see anything after the explosion? No. <laughs> that nice police officer woke me up. I was, uh, bleeding. They they put the bandage on my head, but I guess too little, too late, huh? Did you see anyone approach the shuttle before the police officers got here? Mm, some men in fancy suits were walking around asking questions. But that's how it is on this planet. Fancy suits, fancy men, fancy churches. Not to my liking. <sighs> Um, when you say fancy suits, were they church people? No, 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 no. Just, just the one, the one priest who died. These were uh, the, the that that corp that corporation, the the, the cyborgs. Uh, you know, the metal men, the tin men, walking around. It was them. They were in a hurry, big hurry. I don't remember much. Gestures. Yeah. Um. So I kind of like comfortingly like pat him on the shoulder, but like kind of awkwardly, like too yeah. hard almost. There, there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, and I say, um, thank you, sir. You have been a great help. Please make sure that you get the medical attention that you require. What? What do you mean? We're not going. Going where? He just looks at you like, well, you don't know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did you just walk off? Uh, I, I mean, if he doesn't Or do you, you actually want him to... Yeah, like, he just looks at you like, I thought you were here to collect me, like... Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's really confused. Um... <clears throat> and so is he. I just, yeah, I just kind of look around and I'm just like, no, sir, we're not going anywhere together. Thank you for your help. And then I walk away. He just shouts, I won't go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, he, shakes, he shakes his head and he's like, whew. <sighs> Survived another day, I guess. <laughs> and um, that's the angel of death today. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Not today, Nomika. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, so you, you turn, you see, you see Booker, uh, kind of coming back from his interview. Um, Kiran, what are you, what are you doing, uh, after you, you, you've done your kind of like materials analysis? Um, I guess I'd probably be looking at the parts that are missing and mm -hmm. trying to ascertain if what if anything has been removed because you said there was like a big get you know like there was a gaping hole and then there was like all the shrapnel everywhere i'm trying to figure out if there's any pieces missing and trying to like work my way backwards to see where the mechanical flaw may have occurred where it was without sabotage with, yeah without a, a like a blueprint you don't even know what kind of shuttle this was so without a blueprint mm -hmm. you don't know what should be or shouldn't be here yeah okay yeah it's hard to tell it's a big burnt up mess Mm. In that case, I'll probably just stand by and stand by the shuttle and wait for them to finish interviewing people, since I've okay. kind of exhausted my expertise or the extent of yeah, my knowledge. I, I think that's sort of the case with with Booker and Nomi too. Like, there weren't a lot of um, the only other thing you could do would be like review security camera uh, footage if such a thing exists. Like, there is a customs office that kind of manages mm -hmm. the the tra traffic coming in and out. I don't feel like it's going to show much other than an explosion, which we already know that that happened. Mm -hmm. Well, we could have actually, we could probably see. I didn't even think about that. Um, is there a yeah. way I could Go check on. the, if I could check the security footage before the shuttle took off to see if anyone was around it or near it or tampering with it 
before the explosion occurred? Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, if you had access to the, the feed, you totally could. Okay. I guess um, I'll go pay him a visit. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to do that with Booker and, and Omi, like all three of yeah. you? Okay. Yeah. The I'll suggest it to them. Just in case they put yeah. a red tape. Yeah. So seeing that they've finished their interview, um, I'll walk over to them and sort of bring up the idea and say, um, I analyzed some of the chemicals that the survey team did a sweep for. There's nothing explosive in the mix, nothing that uh, wouldn't naturally be present in the sort of fuel this uh, spacecraft was using. That being said, that fuel is typically very inert. So the fact that it caught flame at all or exploded in such a way is definitely very suspicious. I, if you don't mind, if you could accompany me, I think we should uh, maybe overlook some of the security footage, see if maybe a mechanic or somebody who is more intimately acquainted with this engine did anything to the aircraft before it attempted to take off. That sounds good. Come with you, especially in case they decide to throw up a red tape or roadblock in front of you. Not exactly happy we're here, you know. So let's do what I say. Okay. Lead the way. Mm -hmm. okay. Booker goes okay. off in the direction. Okay. So we 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 cut to uh the inside of a uh the inside of a, a small office. Um it is uh, fairly cramped for the, the whole group of you. Uh, it's got a desk in the middle. It has a uh, slowly shifting um, like hologram projection on the back of some kind of pastoral scene of like green, kind of green hills. And uh, like it's like a river scene, like a watercolor painting, um, but it's a hologram. Um, and there is a robed figure, uh, male robed figures in black uh, black robes. They're, they've faded a bit now. They're sort of grayish. Um, and they're pinned with a uh, a crest of uh, House House Eridanus. Um, the uh, the man in question is kind of in his mid thirties. Uh, he's got little uh, silver rimmed glasses on the end of his nose, and he's like balding slightly. Uh, and you you come in, uh, and he he stands up, and he looks like surprised. Uh, and when he realizes who you are, he he bows, uh, and he uh, he says. Honored cousins, I, I didn't expect to see you. I, I didn't realize this was a crux affair at this point. The this is the customs office. the The officers are all outside, and he's not really sure who's in charge. He keeps looking back and forth between the three of you. I'm not like you just take on that. It's okay. Uh, we just want to review some some tape here. Uh, We'd like access to the, the tapes beforehand. We want to make sure we're doing a thorough job. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 of course. Uh, can you make a um, make a talk roll uh, with charisma? Sure. Can I help with that? No, oh, never mind. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, I mean, you can help. An eleven and a twelve are different. Twelve is like a like a crit on this dude. So yeah, I know me. If you yeah, help, it'll, it'll, it'll make then, a difference. Yeah. yeah, great. Um, talk with charisma. Talk charisma. Oh! Damn, you're all. This guy's. He's just <laughs> fucking so happy to help. Uh, so yeah, he uh he says um, yes, yes, of course. Security footage completely. Uh, one second, and he, he reaches out and he, he waves his hand and he, he brings up a, a an interface of footage and uh, and he says, um, <laughs> I uh, I invested in a new system for the customs authority some months ago. Things, as I imagine you know, around here have been somewhat uh, dicey, and I thought better to uh, protect our assets. Huh. Let me um, let me show you, and he he turns his hand to like scan to the to the scene and uh, and he says um so uh you can see here uh and he basically hits play and you you watch you see chaplain valencio walk across the the way get into the into the shuttle and then <laughs> shuttle blows up throwing shrapnel everywhere there's a brief flickering in the in the cam 
uh, and uh, and he, he, he it flickers for just a second, and then he says, ah, see, right there, hardened cameras. Just in case something like this, a normal camera would have blanked out completely. But uh, as you can see, we can we can see the whole messy affair. And uh, you can see that people have been injured. There's like security alarms going off. Um, and uh, and he says, uh, of course, you, you have access to, uh, to, to all of this footage. I'm, I'm more than happy to send it your way. Yes, um, that's good, especially with the hardened cameras. Very nice. Um, could you spin back even further um, before? I want to see if anyone was around the shuttle at all. Yes, 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 of course. And he swipes it back. And you can see that as people are moving around, they have little ID like tags on them and like there's other meta information. Um, and he scrolls back until you see an empty spot. Uh, and then he, he plays forward and you can see the shuttle come in and land. Uh, those, uh, those sorts of, like, you see it land, you see it sitting there, you see the team come up, you see that old guy pushing, uh, like a little hover cart and he loads some, some, uh, luggage into the back of the ship right before the, the chaplain arrives. Um, yeah. I don't notice anyone doing anything weird. I mean, you see a woman. You see a woman in a jumpsuit come out, uh, open the 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 hatch for the the cockpit, and then she gets in, closes it right before the chaplain gets there. You can see her through the window, like flipping switches and, and running through the initial stuff. Mm. And then the eventually, and then eventually, gets back to the boom. Who was this pilot? Do we have an ID? Mm, well, uh, if you're looking for any kind of financial information, the comings and goings, docking fees, uh, customs manifest, those those I'm, I'm happy to help you with. Um, unfortunately, uh, personal information is something that I don't have access to, unless they're an employee of the dock, uh, which this woman is not. Private pilot, looks like. Is that why her ID isn't displayed on the screen like the others are? Yes, that's right. Uh, you'll notice a few others, uh, folks coming and going, uh, people who are not registered to the system, uh, uh, these sorts of things. Uh, Berkman is, um, and he, when he says this, when he talks about Berkman, his effect slips a little, and he's not so like eager and helpful, and he kind of gets a bit of a, like, a, a sneer to him. He says, Berkman's a backwater dust ball. It's trillions trying to fix it, of course, but <laughs> there's infrastructural problems, deep, deep-seated infrastructural problems. But that's not why you're here. The crime, uh, of course. Hmm. I don't know if anyone, any of us said crime, but... Well, I mean, of course it's a crime. They don't send house trucks to do audits. I mean, that's my job. We're trying to figure out exactly what happened here. I yeah. tend to not think that it's an accident. And that's what we're trying to figure out and see if it supports it. Of course, reviewing the tape is... You've been helpful. Thank you. If I get a copy of that as well, that'd be wonderful. Right. Yes, of course. I'll send you everything that I have. Uh, and he, he goes through the... grabs the files and bundles them up and he, he sends them to you. Can I see the footage before you do that of the first responders? Oh, yes, the of course. The first people who attempted to... This is exactly what I'm talking about, about infrastructural problems. Did you know that there's only one local officer here at any given time? What, what am I to do if there's a problem? I mean, yes, most of the time the only problems are people who don't want to pay their fees and with little pressure and reminding them that we can take control of their vessel. Uh, those fees are easy enough to clear up, but there's, there's only just the one. Eh. I swear. You know, there was a time where this planet ran smoothly. Not anymore. Uh, here you can see uh, our our first responder. Uh, now, now, now that's Officer Hepburn. She, she's a good woman. She tries her hardest. Really cares about people. And when he says people, he rolls his eyes. But uh, it takes a good hour, maybe more, for the rest of them to show up. And now they're scanning the place, and the fire is already mm -hmm. out. Trillion was here like that. In the corner. <laughs> Coroner, oh no, no, no! You, you have a, 
you have a much higher opinion of these people than you should. The, the coroner, this, the medical technician is a, it's a machine. It's a, a scanner. Uh, they'll run the bodies through a scanner and get a... Listen, I, I had an elderly aunt who died recently. We went through the whole process. It, it's an automated autopsy scan. It's, it's nothing. It's not as I'm going to turn have... away from him and just because I'm tired of his <laughs> yeah. blubbering and turn back to sure. Officer Green and just kind of say. So in other words, we don't have an accurate eyewitness who can verify that the chaplain is indeed dead and we don't have his body. We also don't have the body of the pilot, so we can't get a positive ID because we cannot rule out this wasn't some sort of suicide attempt, suicide bombing. That's true. There was no explosive on site. The chemicals simply weren't present. Therefore, this couldn't have been a timed attack. It had to be either an accident, which we've already ruled out, or some sort of deliberate malfunction. The only person who could have caused that with any kind of certainty would have been the pilot. I agree. Probably walked on board with some sort of... Anyways, thank you for your help. <laughs> like, Kind of motions for us to get away from this guy. So yeah. So about. as you're as you're as you're leaving, uh, he's like, if if there's absolutely anything else at all that you need, uh, I, I would be happy to come to the embassy uh, either now or, or or later tomorrow and and talk to anyone that, that needed talking to. I'm help, sure help that you won't process be necessary, the, but if if we need your help further, we'll we'll be in touch. Yes, uh, I've I've included my personal information in the file that I gave you. You can contact me anytime. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, and he Walking. nods. He's just like yeah. in the background. Yeah, watching <laughs> after you. And we we stick with him for a second. And he like he sighs and he he sits down. And he like opens a drawer and takes out a a bottle of of liquor and he pours a, a glass. <laughs> okay. Time to go back to my life. Shit. Yeah, and he, he drinks he drinks a little bit of it and he sets the glass down and he just he he looks down at the table. <laughs> He just shakes his head and he's just like, maybe next time. <laughs> Get him next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, you you leave the office. Uh, where where do you go? What are you doing? Well, as we're like walking out of his office, um, I'm I speak up and I say, he mentioned that. Officer Hepburn was here by herself for an hour, but the Trilliant showed up almost immediately. When I was speaking with the older civilian man over there, who was nearby when the blast took place, he also mentioned seeing, quote-unquote, fancy men at the crash site after the explosion happened. So that's two eyewitnesses stating that Trillient representatives were here. Why were Trillient representatives at a crash at all? The only obvious connection would be that it was a Trillient transport, but even then, I was talking to uh, Hepburn, and apparently these uh, Trillient fancy men, as that man so called them, uh, were loading some sort of piece of tech into. Uh, a truck pretty quickly they said it was some sort of proprietary technology blah, blah, blah that kind of nonsense so they had a vested interest in something with this show yeah. precisely my thought <laughs> so gruff the crime dog he's on the case <laughs> it was wide f wise for us to bring those dogs with they've clearly got something <laughs> Arnahan, down. <laughs> Calm down, Arnahan. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> He's got a nose for crime. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Um, okay. well, apparently, my house is being attacked by squirrels, mm -hmm. probably. Um, it seems that the next course of action, then, is to investigate why Trilliant had anything to do with this crash. Whether they had some pro proprietary technology to <laughs> It appears that they were the first ones on site. What just happened? Oh my god, my dog is losing her mind. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. it. All right. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, there is, there is that question and, and Amira, you know, somebody at, at Trillion that you, um, mm -hmm. you could ask about that if you wanted. Yeah. Um, I'll mention that. I'll just say, I, uh, as you know, officer Greaves, I did meet with them recently. Um, after that bug you found, I'm not sure that they'll be quite as receptive to my line of questioning, but, uh, I'll see if I can talk to them see uh what they were doing there okay uh you have you have cruz's personal number mm -hmm. i'm not sure call. i want to talk to him in front of everyone yeah, right yeah <laughs> i have to call my friend over here somewhere else gotta go yeah yeah well like, i also don't really don't want listen to, to my conversation, conversation. Well, I also don't want to have this conversation like in public. Like I kind of want to get out of here. That's like the main thing. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, uh, so you're like, let's go and I'll call them from the embassy or. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we're like in this like public space terminal and it's the middle of the night. What is it? Like 2 AM now. Yeah. So like we should like head back and pick up the trail in the morning. I also am not particularly keen on calling someone at two a.m. in the morning. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, having to sleep is not very trail though, so he's probably up. But yeah, fair, okay. fair. All right, okay. So you uh, you get you get set to to leave, and you 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 leave the the spaceport, and um, the Arnahan and the the other officers see this, and they they start following. But um, you notice that there is across the uh, the kind of like they're all hover vehicles. So there's not really a street, but like in one of the parking stalls, there is a uh, like a limousine. Uh, it's a black kind of oblong, like obelisk looking thing um, with a, a faint like gold sheen. Like if you look at it at the right angle, it like it glimmers gold. It's very ostentatious despite being built to look stealthy. And it's just like sitting there uh, and uh, it like. Yeah, across from it, it's on. Like it's got its little under undercarriage lighting, and it's hovering. But it, it looks like they're sitting there waiting for you. Okay, for me. As you walk up, just like the group of you, oh. like this, this limit okay. of stuff. But for all of us, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when uh, when you approach the the door, to the limo opens, and one of the uh, somebody gets out. Um, it's a uh, a man wearing. Um, just kind of like a, a functionary's outfit, uh, not wearing like uh, um, anything that would that would it, like looks nice. Just got a nice suit on, basically. And he opens the door and closes it behind him and starts walking towards the group of you. That's good. Yeah, just let him. Okay, so you just wait. Ways. You just wait for him. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. So he comes up to you uh, and he uh, and he says. Um, uh, I think he probably speaks to Nomi. Uh, he says, uh, Cirrus. Like, it's a question, like, do I have the right person? Cirrus Nomi call? Uh, <clears throat> I nod. And you are? Yeah, he shakes it. Just a messenger. I, um, I've been sent by the high church to collect you. Someone of some import has uh, an interest in meeting with you. And who might that be? I'm not precisely at liberty to say. Now I, I know, puts his hands up. I know that this is, given what's happened recently, it sounds suspicious. Anything that I can do to assure you that you're safe, I will, but... You'll understand when I show you who needs to speak with you. Yes, and you'll forgive us if we're hesitant to get in any vehicle belonging to someone from an unknown location trying to convince us to go meet a stranger, given what's happened. Of course. And uh, I think he he's he's prepared for this eventuality. Uh, Chaplain, <laughs> what is what is something yeah. what is something that you would have given him or told him to say to put uh, Nomi at ease? So I think maybe something like um, he he gave 
maybe one of like the the pamphlets to the the thing on the the prudence when we had the the stupid oh, that tiny party. ah party. yeah <laughs> so like one of those pamphlets with uh just like a like a, a little note attached that says um a drink to get things off your mind or something like that like kind of a similar thing to what the chaplain used to always like try and encourage them to come and do yeah 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 i love it so yeah he re he reaches in and he, he pulls out the uh the pamphlet and he, he hands it to you and the pamphlet's like actually like slightly burned and there's probably like some drops yeah. of blood on it because it was in your pocket when you got blown mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. but yeah so he he hands it to you Nomi, and and waits to see your your reaction okay um i i look at it and i hold it so that um, Booker and the Amira can both see it as well. And then I look at um, Booker and I say, What do you think? That does look like. Hmm. Booker looks at the guy and he's like, So you're saying that they're. waits expectantly yeah and he uh he says uh god works in mysterious ways <clears throat> he ge gestures at the limo like please yeah is he this gesturing doesn't... for just know me or i like all of you like please come come with me yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh this doesn't confirm that our friend is alive you realize that don't you all it confirms is that you were at the crash site and that for some reason you came into possession of one of the chaplain's belongings. I believe that the chaplain Valencio would want you to have faith. Well, unfortunately for you both, I don't. And he, yeah, he raises an eyebrow and, uh, and he says, uh, I understand. Um, There's nothing more yeah. you can give us than this. Hmm? You have to understand how this comes off. These matters Given are... Given everything that's going on. He says, these matters are sensitive, but I understand that it's not safe for you. I'm sure that we'll be in contact again. Um, before Let's he see. leaves, yeah. I want to... I want to use my uh, suppressed cognition, mm -hmm. which is <clears throat> that I can make the target not think about something, whether that's the presence of the telepath, the possibility of committing violence. Mm -hmm. And that is what I want to do is um, prevent him from thinking about any possibility of hurting us on the way to where we're going. Okay. Uh, so you're, you're going to go with him? After I do that, yes. Okay, sure. Uh, I will roll so that we can see how that goes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any any hostility he might feel towards you, you you just get into his brain and you bundle it up and you hide it in the back corner so it just doesn't occur to him. Yeah, fantastic uh, and... for like a yoga teacher or something like that. Somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Can you imagine like there like this is why this is why Serpens is both the like psychic assassin's house and the doctor house because man a talented Serpens therapist would just be like yo all that bad stuff you think about yourself gone suppressed yeah. fuck it and you're like whoa I'm actually awesome and things are fine oh, that's God. great yeah. but you're only <laughs> fine when you're in this office with me and you pay me lots of money <laughs> <laughs> So uh yeah, so so he doesn't even notice that it happens to him. Uh yeah. and he uh yeah, he comes over and uh and he, he opens the door um and gestures for you to uh to step inside. Um so I look at Amira, the Amira and um Booker mm -hmm. and I say Um I am confident that this man will be unable to commit any acts of violence toward us for the near future. However, that's not to say that whoever else might be in that vehicle, or perhaps someone on the other side, could potentially mean us harm. If we think this is a trap, there's no reason for us to go. 
It's up to you. However, I believe that I will be getting in that vehicle. It could very well be a trap, but honestly, at this point, our options are pretty limited. So we pull on this thread. And I trust that you know, he's like addressing the, the brilliant guy, like, mm-hmm. I will be keeping my weapon and an eye on you. And he, he nods and he's just like, I would expect no less. All right, well then, let's go. Booker walks ahead. Okay. Clearing the, he walks okay. ahead specifically to clear the, he does like a visual inspection you know, and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Very bodyguard. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you look, <laughs> you look in to the limousine and, uh, Mark, would you like to tell Booker what he sees? Would it, could it be like they get in the limo and then it pulls away and then Valencio mm-hmm. teleports in like whilst it's like, like <laughs> from the know, front seat like, or like perfect like, from like nearby like you know building like he waits for right of course and just like, right oh that's so good so they get into the empty limo no risk for, they get like, into the empty him. limo and you were yeah and it pulls away and the big the big the big reveal is like well, where is he where are they going but we don't follow the limo we stay the camera shot stays still and, and it refocuses on like a bar behind the limo and you're sitting at a table in the window of the bar and you look up as it starts to pull out and then poof, you disappear and we just see your your glass like rattle on the table yeah yeah oh, that's so good <laughs> and there's just I'm some waiter like limits. you didn't pay his bill <laughs> no there's just like a crisp credit note left yeah. next to oh the my glass. god yeah perfect so it's just yeah. sitting Spinning, underneath yeah, the glass or, or even better like the glass it's like <laughs> yeah yeah clink and yeah, so the three of you are in the limo, and just as you're about to kind of be like, what do you think's going on? There's a popping sound, and then the chaplain <laughs> appears uh, and just kind of like, like lands in the seat. Booker instinctually draws his gun and is like... <laughs> 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 yeah. And he's like... <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think like, yeah, you see, he looks almost exactly... Maybe like the hair has been like cut really short <laughs> from the explosion and the surgery. And he's got like some pretty mm-hmm. deep scarring on like the side of his face, and then this gold arm is <laughs> like just poking out from the suit. Uh, and as soon as like Booker kind of pulls the gun, uh, Valencio just kind of holds his hands up. Uh, it's good to see that mm-hmm. your reactions have not been dulled in the slightest, Agent Graves. <sighs> Son of a bitch. I apologize for the overly dramatic entrance, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I was not seen entering the vehicle, so. Well, good to see that you're not dead and we're not about to explode. No. Um, Yes, I was very, I was quite nearly dead, but I managed to teleport most of me away just before the explosion erupted. Are you all well? I have not had, I was not, I'm not aware of what has happened in my absence. Uh, has there been any difficulties? Mm. <laughs> He's going to like take in the scene and just say quietly, it's good to have you back, Chaplain. Thank you, Emira. It is uh, perhaps, well, there is no point in calling me Chaplain anymore. Uh, Chaplain Valencio, as you are all no doubt aware, died in that explosion. Perhaps you should call me Gabriel from now on. Uh, it will be more fitting to the work that I will be performing in the future. Um, but thank you. Gabriel, is, huh? Hmm. Chaplain Valencio was... settle on that one. <laughs> Uh, perhaps uh, Valencio is more the name I set on Agent Graves. It was a life I built for myself uh, after some difficult times. Uh, it was a peaceful life that I hoped to use to assist the nobility, but it seems that these terrorists and traitors have taken that from me. So, well, how goes your investigation? Uh, I do not know how much you know of the explosion, but I can fill you in on what I remember. Please do. It was a female pilot when I got in the vehicle. <laughs> Don't mind oh, him, that's my new pet. <laughs> uh, no, I look up, I say, the pilot um, 
when I got in and she confirmed my identification, she waited until I confirmed my identity on the reader, uh, simply stated for book for Berkman and then activated some sort of uh, incendiary device built into the ignition of the shuttle itself. Um, she was not familiar to me. I did not recognize her, but uh, her statement was quite clear. No doubt she's dead. I doubt she has the ability to teleport. Like, Honestly, she... if she had not telegraphed her intent with such a sinister message, I doubt I would have been able to escape myself. As soon as it became clear what she was up to, I managed to begin my ability, but it was not enough to get uh, all of me out. And then I'll hold up the, the arm, a small gift from the uh. church for my sacrifice. Fancy. It is not exactly to my ideal. Uh, Cirrus Carr, I must apologize. I am aware that I ran off at a key moment in our investigation, and it has unfortunately led to some greater concerns. Uh, please understand that I will be dedicating my full capabilities to the mission for the future. Yes, uh, Gabriel. <laughs> <laughs> it will take some time, that I'm sure. is a gift from the Trilliant. <laughs> the church paid for it, but indeed, Trilliant built the arm a technical prosthesis uh, expert by the name of Veronica Zuri. I am not particularly keen on the fact that it was trillion, but I can't say I am not uh, I do not disapprove of being able to have such a fine prosthesis to enable me to continue my work, but yes, I believe that they managed to recover my body from wherever I managed to teleport myself to and took me up to the cathedral. Which seems to answer your it seems to answer your questions seems to answer your questions before know me about what the trillion was doing there and what it is that they took away with them. Right. Um interesting. However, nothing truly comes without a cost. And in return for this arm, what do they expect from you? They have not made any requests as of yet, but very much like you, I am awaiting the day that they come asking. And I have no doubt that they have some sort of tracker, at the very least, built into the arm. One I will try and have removed at the nearest opportunity. Indeed. Mm. It's, it seems that you are in the Trillion's debt, well, Gabriel. Let us let them believe so, at least for now. My the only debt that I have to repay is to God and to this empire. Trilliant can quite frankly how to put this carefully, there is no keen way. Trilliant can suck a dick if they want to try and get something out of me in exchange for this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nomi looks that is a how they said it on old Earth. Aback. Yeah. She looks a little <laughs> taken aback by his vulgarity. Um <laughs> Uh, so, you were saying, and or you were debriefing us on what you remember about the explosion? Yes, there was a, as I mentioned, the female pilot stated for Berkman, the explosion, it was key to the ignition. The, I was called away by an inquisitor, Akanyemi. He is a senior member of the church, and from what I can gather, he seemed to be ignorant or innocent, I'm not sure which, of uh, the attack. However, it is likely he has been compromised. The encryption uh, was from his personal channel. So either he is a fantastic liar, he is incompetent and has allowed his uh, communications to be hacked, or our traitors here on Berkman have considerable reach into the high church. I would not be, I will be frank that Elder Miguela and Talat Lau 
uh, well, let's just say Elder Miguela knew of my abilities and this attack happened after I met with her. So she is currently at the top of my list. Well, fortunately for you, she's also at the top of ours. And Crux's, as it seems. Mm. Um, and I look at kind of I look at Booker and Amira and I say, um, I spoke with Officer Yancey and it appears that there is a warrant for the Elder Miguel's arrest. She's our top priority. Really? One other thing. The Inquisitor Akanyeni, he did make some statements which have got me thinking. The we captured Carsten, uh, and she was the one who led us here to Berkman. She said that they were planning something. We've not yet found a connection between Berkman and Carsten. We don't yet know who was working with her. It could be Miguela, it could be Talat Lau, or it could be someone else. The church is interested in removing Lau and potentially Miguela from their position of influence. but. We would not like to make a move before we know who Carsten was speaking with. I, of course, am happy to work with the, the rest of you and to work within Crux's uh, jurisdiction, but I should let you know what the church is aiming for, at least. I feel like there is very few people the four of us can now trust here on Berkman, so I wish to be as forthright with information as possible. There's also the question of this pilot. If we can ascertain an identity, maybe we can work backwards and see who gave her the orders. It's the smoking mm. gun, so to speak. We need to very get a positive so, ID. Yeah. Yes, I would be very... <laughs> I have a personal investment in finding out who sent her, but uh, first we must do our jobs, yes? Mm. I agree with you, Amira. The smoking gun, so to speak. The pilot. Mm. Since she is the one who was in on the explosion before it happened, and it seems that the rest of our leads are, so far, ignorant. I have the full cooperation of the High Church. If they were the one that uh, paid for the job, it's likely that they will have a record of who she was. I can request that information from Akiyemi. Um, Where's her body? Could we get a forensic ID? I'm afraid I do not know. I would imagine there probably isn't much left. Explosion like that. All we need is a finger. You might not have a finger. <laughs> if my experience was anything to go by, there certainly won't be an arm. Mm. Mm. Uh, chaplain, do you think you could maybe talk to some of the more skilled crux officers maybe get a uh... sorry i'm gonna add a character uh what do they call that when you talk to somebody to draw a picture based off a description oh forensic artist no yeah do they have yeah. that in the future <laughs> i mean i don't I'm think we would just like give it away software. yeah but yeah you, i mean you you could get access like if, if you take it if you take it back to the embassy and then beam all the information that you got up yeah to the that's ship, what i mean the, mm -hmm. the Prudence's computer, the, the fucking crux back computer can like process that and give you if that person is available. Yeah, like all that would be automated, but it's still definitely a thing. Hmm. I'm going to suggest that to the mm -hmm. chaplain, whatever you just said. His name is Gabriel. Sorry. Yes, Gabriel. <laughs> so I'm going to get JP to change it on the thing. Yeah. And then that way yeah, I know when it. you look at your name, it's just like right there. <laughs> <laughs> it just it's hard to get out of that yeah uh yes that seems like a very good idea i will also request uh the information on who the church hired to pilot the shuttle as it was apparently a private uh affair see um, if that information matches up booker is also um, so we're in this this limo this other guy did he get back in in the front or something we're just driving along um yeah i mean it's it's automated the car is just moving itself oh okay so there's no okay <clears throat> then um i guess uh booker's gonna address gabriel and be like yo chap gabriel um 
It's going to take a little getting used to. Your friends here I in this car. This is paid for by who? 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 Do you trust these folks? I want to be careful about what we talk about in here. Mm. Agent Graves, honestly, at this point, the only people I trust are the three of you. You three were clearly surprised by my sudden absence, which meant that you did not have any idea that you knew where I was going. Everybody else, to me, is a potential suspect. As for no, to what be we frank, I was a little case. pissed you were gone. Yes. Mm. Fucking everything I... went to shit right after that. No. My apologies, Agent Graves. I was summoned on urgent business, and my loyalty is to the church. I won't hide that. The church has saved me and raised me since I was a boy. When they asked for my help, I felt I owed it to them. But it does mean that I do feel an element of betrayal, potentially. If there is someone in the church working against me, then, well... I trust people to a degree. The Inquisitor that I spoke with seemed to be earnest. His guilt was very uh, apparent. However, there was also something. He is an Inquisitor. They can be, how would you call them, uh, squirrely. But yes, the only three people I trust now are the three of you. And I'm afraid that I understand if I have to re-earn that trust. But we should be careful what we say. But if they are listening, then I hope that whoever is working against us is ready, for they have invited quite a uh, quite a disaster upon themselves by letting me live. Hmm. Well, when I found out that you were supposedly dead, I didn't quite believe it. Inquisitors, yes, they're squirrely, but. Who are you, my friend? <laughs> I have a few tricks up my sleeve, as I'm sure do all of you. But um, what do you advise? Cirrus Car, this is your operation, of course. Please uh, consider me a tool and weapon at your disposal. Uh, how would you like me to proceed? A little First, less I would like you to that. destroy Jesus. your desk. <laughs> Yeah. Just just wreck up the inside of the limo. Just wreck. I'm getting used to that new arm there. Are you Gabriel? Yeah, it's new arm. Like... Punches, punches his arm through the window. I'm sorry. Ah, it, uh, he arm. does this. So. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking Doctor Strange love over here. <laughs> it's a very um, red dwarf for me. Yeah, I agree that. It's not clear who we should trust. I think it's very important for us to discern the identity of the pilot of the shuttle, as the Emir suggested. I also think that if the church is behind this attack on your life, then requesting information from them probably shouldn't, or probably wouldn't be the best idea, at least not if we go through your means. We need to find a different path. I do believe that it is not, if there is anything in the church, it must be, uh, it will only be section, sections. I do not believe it would be the whole church. If that was the case, they would not have assisted me in the uh, excommunication that we provide, that we secured before arriving. I do not believe it is, uh, I suspect that this is a group here on Berkman rather than the organization. But yes, we will avoid using them for fear of information uh, leaking out. Right. And and Nomi, what, what the chaplain is saying here reflects what Yancey said before. It's not just the chaplain trying to protect his own. It does seem that if if there is a problem, if if the Elder Megilla is a is an issue, it's just her or like some subset of Berkman, uh, not the whole the whole church at large. So yeah, they, they seem to think that's the case. Uh, right. Crux HQ um, too. Uh, well, I think that one of our first courses of action should be to locate and apprehend the Reverend Miguela. She's wanted by Crux. There's a warrant for her arrest. And if she knows anything about the church, the church's connection with this explosion, mm -hmm. then we'll be able to it will be in ha, sorry. We'll be able to interrogate her once she's in our our hands. 
very well. Might I suggest if uh, you're coming along with us there, Gabe, um, maybe look a little different? You did meet with this reverend, did you not? I did meet with Reverend Megala, yes. I can always stay out of sight until I am needed as well. Um, what do you suggest? An overly large coat and hat, uh, Agent Graves? Mm. There is a faint Something. smile. <laughs> Something, maybe not that. Uh, I just want us to be careful. I'm sure, she remember I will... meeting you. You're a very memorable man. I will do my best to find some different clothing. Uh, my hair has been cut short, and perhaps the facial scarring will help hide me. But do keep in mind that I only need to be within a few hundred meters uh, to be available if I am required. I think the fact that you're still alive, we all know that. <laughs> all right. Well, interesting that they really a warrant for the reverend. That's interesting. I do not think they're going to go along with it, but again, that would be a direct opposition against Crux and inviting, well, a lot to come down on them. Either way, mm. I think I might enjoy this. I don't think it's her we have to worry about. I think it'll be the way the locals react when we take her. Probably so behoove us to, to use a, a degree of secrecy. Quick, so like you said, so no one realizes it's happened. Mm. No, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, we're gonna, she's go, we're, revered. Right we're gonna go. Ki we're gonna go kidnap an old lady. You wake her up in the middle of the night, throw a bag over her head, and take her to prison. That's just make her disappear. I mean, you're right though, uh, Kiran. Like that, everything that you've seen about her so far, she is much beloved. Uh, yeah, people so, love her. So this is this yeah. might be the match that fucking strikes this whole thing on fire. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. They already don't like us here. This is out of character. They already don't like us oh. here. If we just pick her up and take her, they will fucking hate us. Us moving on the planet is going to be very difficult because she's like of the people for the people. Mm. She certainly seems that way. Mm. Seems that way, doesn't she? Seems. <laughs> I mean, based on everything that you've seen uh, about her, yeah, that is the case. So mm. yeah, to be to be attended with care. So do you, uh, where do you go? What do you, what do you want to do? Because it's very, it's very late. Uh, and, um, you know me, you're, you're, you're tapped out psychically. So like, do you want to go and, and rest and, and make a plan? Or is this just like strike now before somebody else has a chance to find out that the, the Gabriel is still alive? I think that's probably the question um, that, that Booker poses to her. Like, it's your call. We could go right now. We don't really have a plan and been a long day but in that regard it might be prudent if we think something else might happen and something else is planned but we're able to be strategic about it we have a higher chance of success to get it done quickly and uh without arousing suspicious suspicion and st stoking the fire for the locals your call either way i agree that it behooves us to move slow in this case we need to take our time and plan so as, we, so as not to upset the local populace. We don't need a, another riot on our hands. We need to move am, quietly. I'm intended, inclined to agree. I think we you try to move still down. fast, but um, mm. plan this out. We can also track down this um, pilot, perhaps see if she is directly connected to uh, the Reverend Elder or perhaps to someone else. Um, it may give us another lead if we need to pursue, pursue one. I would imagine they're probably somebody not of too much importance, especially considering they sent them to. No, but if we can track them, perhaps we can track who sent them, confirm if it was this uh, Talad Lao or whether it was someone else or perhaps I agree. even the... Now, Nomi, you, you, have, you have another name too, right? The name that you wrenched Always. from Lao's brain. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so I guess I just mentioned that to them. Also, is like um, a possible other lead that we can investigate in the meantime is the person in connection with 
Pastor Talat Lau. He mentioned the name Alders, who I think is someone above him in the chain of command. So perhaps we can investigate that. Alders, huh? I am going to be a no. Mm-hmm. So it's going into the detective brain. <laughs> cool. Um, so you want to see if you if you recognize that name? Yep. Um, Just for whatever reason. With an eight, I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't. It's yeah. This person is either it's a fake name, or they're they're operating in secrecy, or they're not a big enough deal for it to be. So if I got a twelve, you know, it's worth it. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you, the name doesn't, yeah, it doesn't sound familiar to you. Um, but maybe if you had a face to go with it or it's definitely like, no, me, you, you know, for a fact that it's something significant, there's a reason Mm -hmm. to pursue that simply because it wasn't volunteered. It was secret information. Yep. Cool. Okay. All right. So the plan is to go back to the, uh, back to the embassy and, uh, chill out, go and rest. Yes. Okay. All right. So you get back. And uh, everybody kind of goes, uh, they, they, they go to their, get their rest. Um, and you, you go back to your, your quarters. Uh, Kiran, you, uh, you see uh, Aram, uh, Aram Cruz, and he's, he's there. He's in the, he's in the room. Uh, and he looks like he's like waiting for you to get back. Mm-hmm. And he gives I you a look him. like, yeah, do you want to? Okay. So you, you go over to yeah. him and he, uh, and he says, um, so that um, the thing that we talked about, it's all sorted out. You just say when. I don't think. I think I should go. It's. I still don't think that I could operate with these people. But with the chaplain's return, things change a bit, and I feel in my heart that although Nomi may be misguided, she isn't all bad. I don't know, something happened earlier and the way everyone acted made it feel made me feel as though they don't necessarily want a bloodbath, like I was originally led to believe. <sighs> Mr. Cruz, if possible, I would like to wait for my replacement to arrive. I sent a message to my aunt. I've enlisted someone to sort of help out in my absence. I don't want to leave them high and dry, and I definitely don't want them to die on this rock. Hey, this is our rock, and it's not going to be a rock forever. Get it on the ground floor. Invest in Berkman. Right? Isn't that what they say? <laughs> she, he shakes his head, and he, uh, he says, uh, well, it'll be a shame to see you go, but anything I can do to make your life easier while you stay, let me know. I'll be around. Well, maybe if you when play your cards right, I can put in a good word with my mother for you. <laughs> he just he raises an eyebrow like okay this went in a weird place sure <laughs> <laughs> well she got money I'll invest <laughs> yeah sure that's not at all what he thought you meant um and so he just kind of was like okay yeah <laughs> and yeah and he he nods and he's like well all right like i work for you so i'm i'm here um mm-hmm. and uh chaplain up in Gabriel, mm. Gabriel, you have a uh, you you have a room that you can go to. Do you just like head back to your own room and, and go to rest? Uh, I don't think I'd rest. I'd probably start typing up that report to send to Crux of the pilot description. Right. To sure. Get okay. That so you ID. you start yeah you start heading towards your your room and you get to the you get to the door of your room. You go to open it, and you hear from behind you. You hear a, a, a scream. You hear a woman scream behind you. Yeah, I mean, spin around immediately. Okay, uh, you turn around and you see Amelia, or whatever the fuck her name is. And she has both hands clasped over her mouth, and her eyes are wide, and she's staring at you like she's fucking seen a ghost. <laughs> uh, I guess like the chaplain would be sort of like confused for a second, and then realize <laughs> that oh yeah. Everybody thinks that I'm dead. Technically, yeah, okay. Uh, and then he'll just be like, uh, I'm just trying to hold off his hands and 
try and get her to like calm down somehow. <laughs> My dear, <laughs> perhaps you should uh, sit down. Yeah, perfect. And that's that's a great ending. You're like, uh, let me explain it to you. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And then we and then we fade to fade to black. She's and... so emotional. <laughs> yeah. Emotional yeah. Emily. <laughs> She's just, she you know, she was so tough. sad that the chaplain died and then he came back. He came back from Good the dead. Evelyn. Like like they say, like they say in the religions, he came back from yeah. the dead. Yeah. So he rose again. Miracle. That's right. Uh cool. All right. So, um Booker, you did some investigating in the connection between Lao and the Elder. Uh, so you're you're on that track. That one you you take the experience for it now, but you can you can really lay into it next time when you grab her. Um, know me. Uh, I think you've worked on. You didn't. You didn't get Yancey to escalate it yet, but he did. He did give you some. Actually, he 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 gave you a warrant for like a significant personage. Right, that is escalation. It's not like landing yeah. people on the on the planet yet, but this is a big deal, and he's agreed to it. So yeah, so you get a point of experience too. Yay! Um, and uh, Kiran, you made go. you made a roll on yours, <laughs> so you can you can get experience. Um, and Chaplin, I think you'll probably figure yours out next time. Okay. Yours. Mark sent, Mark sent me a, a goal in the interim, so you can stick yeah. to it or you can write a different one in the, in the meantime, if you like, whichever cool. works. You got a gold you. arm, How right? Do we, get, do we get one? Yeah, you got one. Yeah. One XP. Every single time. Yeah. It's nice and easy. One day I'll get XP. Yeah. That's will. one thing I do like about the XP system in, in this game. It's like, all right, let me calculate how much <laughs> yeah. other stuff. It's just like one. <laughs> you did good. You can get. You can Here's get. A star. You can get. You can get more at the end of like arcs and stuff. But for now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes it nice and easy. Uh, cool. Getting close to, to right. four. Well, that's our that's our episode. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. Let's do some shout outs. Um, why don't we start with our newly returned cybernetic priest, Mark? Shout it out. Yeah. Hey, good robot. Thanks noise. very much for watching this episode. What was that? <laughs> I'm uh, Mark Humes. I make a lot of weird noises when I role play. Uh, you can check out my main thing that I do is called High Rollers. It's a D&D show that's over on twitch.tv forward slash High Rollers d and D. I'm the DM for that it's every Sunday at 5 p.m. UK time. We also upload all the VODs and stuff to the YouTube channel of the same name. Um, and it's all available on Twitch as well. That's like my big thing that I do. And if you would check that out, that would be great. Um, otherwise, you can catch me posting stupid pictures of me in dumb Halloween costumes on Twitter. Um, and maybe one day I'll do some streaming again as well. Amazing episode. Super glad to be back. Uh, sad to say goodbye to Chaplain Valencio, but hello to <laughs> Crusader Greg Gabriel. Uh, the uh, yes. it's time to time to go medieval on some asses. So um, <laughs> yeah, let's see and how the that first goes. target and the first target is an old lady. Yeah, yeah, which is gonna be great. Hey, cool. <laughs> that old Bruns, why don't you uh, why don't you go next? Do some shout outs. Yeah. Uh, hi, hello. I'm that Browns girl. Um, I'm a full time variety caster on Twitch and I do a lot of comic book and RPG stuff. You can find me on Twitter at the same handle that you can find me on Twitch. Also, I'm the I guess like I'm the winner of the streamer showdown of TwitchCon or something. Ooh. So I have a great trophy with Ooh. which to lord my game knowledge over people. Also to bludgeon haters in the head with. <laughs> Sick. That's me. It's good to have. <laughs> Good to have good bludgeoning implement. Excellent. Yeah. Um, Max, why don't you go next? Go, Max, go. Hi, I'm Max. No complaints. I don't have a thing to um, bludgeon anybody with, but I have a slide whistle. That's cool. Um, we're going <laughs> to listen. All right. <laughs> Whatever you got, make them laugh. Um, yeah, I'm going to be streaming later on. Uh, if you want to check that out, some Halloween stuff, probably some Friday the 13th. But check me out on everything else. I'm Gazzy Mexican on everything there. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. Nice, short and sweet. We'll talk about it in the post show about uh, this reunion. It was good. Nice to have uh, Mark back. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, last, but, last but not least, uh, and do you want to do yours or do I get your dog to do it? If, if your dog <laughs> has anything else to say, now's the perfect time. Get on it. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sorry about my dog. She's extremely vocal and she hates everything outside. So she was barking at literally everything. Um, my name is Ann Munition. I am a variety broadcaster. I play a lot of first person shooters mostly. Um, my schedule has been kind of crazy for the past like month or so. Um, and it still will be for the next couple of days. But uh, I will definitely see you guys probably Friday afternoon for the next stream. Not tonight. And then probably not tomorrow. Um, 
But yeah, follow me, ammunition on everything, and I'll see you guys later. Bye. Yeah, rad. Thanks, Anne. Cool. This has been our episode. Uh, I posted a Q&A thread over at community.itmejp.com. So if you want to ask questions or check out uh, Dalen9, Master of Statistics, uh, keeping track of how well or poorly everybody rolled, I think everybody trended up today. I feel like there was a lot of really successful rolling happening. Mm -hmm. So go uh, go over there and, and check that out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at SkinnyGhost or twitch.tv slash Adam Coble. Uh, right now, I am just playing a lot of Magic the Gathering, but oh, uh, I'm going to be needing to do so much Magic right now. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, some prep stuff for um, for this show and for Court of Swords uh, in the next little bit. So if you want to see behind the scenes, I do that over on my channel. Uh, and then tomorrow, I'm just going to be streaming like all day because it's my birthday and I just want to hang out and do a stream. So probably playing Your Magic birthday. and yeah, doing a birthday stream. So Halloween will be over soon. Thank God. Uh, we're going to go and do the uh, the post show. I think that's it for uh, for everybody. That's a nice shirt um, you're wearing there, Adam. Where Thank can you, you get other nice shirts? I was about to say. So I know that we uh, I know that we only have a little while left. If you want to buy your pins or your shirts uh, on the uh, on the merch store, I am mad because as soon as I ordered all of my cool stuff, my cool pins and shit, uh, the Canadian um, Postal Service went on strike. So now I'm just like, come on, guys. <laughs> Just give me, you have every right in the world to strike for better conditions, but I want my stupid stuff. So don't be like me. Get on it early. Get those pins. Uh, Itme.jp slash merch. And I think the ninth is the last day right now for special stuff. So go check it out. That's it. We're done. We're going to go. See you next time. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.